Hello, this is Mr. Doro. Today we're going to be talking about relative mass. It's something that we cover in Unit 5 at our Swartz Creek Chemistry curriculum. Our goal today is to figure out how we determine relative mass and why it's so important in chemistry. So let's go. Well, so we start out right away with a problem. These atoms that we want to, we want to weigh are too small to weigh. So the solution is, if we weigh a group of them, and they have the same number every time, then we can compare that same number. The problem is, how do we get that same number? Well, that's where we have Avogadro's hypothesis coming into the rescue. In Avogadro's hypothesis, when we're comparing gases, if we have the same volume, temperature, pressure, and then we have the same number of particles. Because the song goes, equal volumes of gases at the same temp and pressure have the same number of molecules. Amadeo, Avogadro, that's his hypothesis. Well then what's different about these gases down here is the masses. And so we can compare the same number of particles and each of these have seven in them even though this is a diatomic gas and this is a compound that we have. Just imagine that all these are touching with each other. They still are going to have the same number of particles but they're going to have different masses that we can compare. So here's a little example of things that are a little bit bigger that we can see but we can find the relative mass of these things also, how they're related to each other. That's what relative mass is. So I have an empty box, and the box mass is 19.61 grams, and then that same box with peanuts is 28.21, popcorn 22.94, and almonds is 31.87. So the first thing I want to do is find out what is just the mass of the peanuts. And by the way, we're assuming that they all have the same number of peanuts, popcorn, and almonds, just like we would with those gases in Avogadro's hypothesis. So we have to find the mass of the peanuts, the popcorn, and the almonds, and then compare those same numbers, the masses, with each other. So now I've subtracted the empty box mass from the box and peanuts. I got 8.60 grams. That's just of peanuts. 3.33 grams of popcorn and 12.26 grams of almonds. So when I'm comparing the equal numbers of peanuts, popcorn, and almond, these are the masses that I end up getting. One last thing here too is that we don't know how many peanuts, popcorns, or almonds we have. We just know they're the same number. And that's a lot of times the way it, go, it was going on with atoms also. They didn't know how many atoms or molecules, but they just knew that they had the same number that they can compare. So in order to find the relative mass, we want to divide each mass by the smallest mass to get a factor. We want to know how these are related to each other. The smallest mass that I have here is the popcorn, and so I'm going to divide each of these by 3.33 grams. So when you divide all these, these are the factors that I got. I got 2.58, and really that means 2.58 grams of peanuts, the PN, for every one gram of the popcorn. And this one right here, of course, it's, a one, it's the popcorn that's on there. 3.68, really that means grams of almonds for every one gram of of the popcorn. And that's why they're relative masses. They're related to one gram of the smallest one that you have. So you might be wondering, how does all this stuff relate to chemistry? Well, scientists took these relative masses from elements or atoms on the periodic table and they compared them to a standard. And so once you have a standard for one of them, then you can get the masses for all the other ones by using the relative mass. So the one that they picked was carbon-12, and one-twelfth of carbon-12. And so if we picked this popcorn, which had a relative mass of one, and we said, let's not let that represent carbon, which has a mass of 12. So under here, we would write carbon. This one represents carbon. And we knew that this was carbon-12, had a mass of 12. Then we could find out, then what would the peanuts represent? Well, if 1 is 12, then 2.58 is 2.58 times greater than that 12. And so we can multiply those. And we get 30.96. 
Well, we could do the same thing for the almonds. The almonds are 3.68 times greater than the popcorn because it's a 1 to 3.68 ratio. And so this is just going to be 3.68 times that 12. And when we do that, we get 44.16. So what do these mean? That's the question. What elements would these represent if they had the same ratios as these, 2.58 to 1 to 3.68? And this was carbon-12. Well, to find out, we have to look at these masses, and we have to look also at the periodic table. Now, once we're looking at the periodic table, we want to be looking at the average mass, or the atomic mass, which is right down here. And we want to match up those numbers that went along with the previous slide. So we had 30.96, and if you look at phosphorus right over here, the mass of that is 30.97. Pretty rootin' tootin' close, I would say. And then for the almonds, we had 44.16, and the closest one that we can get to that is scandium, which is at 44.96. And so we just got to go by the closest one to see what the relative masses would be. So back to this one more time then, the 30.96 would be phosphorus. And the 44.16 would be scandium. And so if the popcorn represented carbon-12, then the same ratios pretty much would be for scandium for the almonds and, pe and phosphorus for the peanuts. So let's just recap what we went through today. We talked about relative mass, and relative mass is how the masses relate to each other. It may not say the actual mass, but if you know how they relate to each other, then when you know the actual mass of one of them, you can find the mass of the other. And they always relate to each other that way, no matter how much of each you have. Then we talked about Avogadro's hypothesis. Avogadro's hypothesis makes, makes it possible for us to get relative mass because we can use equal volumes of gases at the same time of pressure. We know they have the same number of molecules. We compare those similar number of molecules, and we determine the mass difference between them as long as they all have the same number of molecules. And those masses on the periodic table, once we pick one as a standard, which carbon-12 was picked as a standard, then when you have the relative masses, and you get those by finding out how they join up with other compounds, once you know the mass of one of them and you see how they join up, then you can get all those masses on the periodic table because you have the relative masses, and you have a standard. So that's what we got today. Hope this helped out. Thanks.